Okay, uh, welcome to robotics uh, one class. In today's class, I would like to work out few problems uh, for the forward kinematics. But the important part is, let me take an example where the rules are not satisfied. Remember the four rules that we talked about? So let's look at the robot, wherein I have a revolute joint here. Then I have another revolute joint here. And then I have a prismatic joint here. So I have a revolute joint, other revolute joint, and I have a prismatic joint here. So this is the first revolute joint. This is the second revolute joint and this is the prismatic joint. If you look at this profile, this robot, you have the first revolute joint. Second revolute joint is perpendicular to first revolute joint. And the prismatic joint is parallel to the second revolute joint. Now, if you remember, our rules are Z is the joint axis. What is the second rule? Xn perpendicular to Zn perpendicular to X n minus 1 and must intersect. And the third rule is we have to use right hand coordinate system. So what we will do is first we will add the zeroth frame. So this is going to be my z0. Then I will draw x0. And I will complete the triad, which is going to be Y0. So X0, Z0, and Y0. Next, I need to go here. This is going to be my Z1. Then I need to have, this is my X1. And I'm going to have this as y1. Uh, and again, just so z x n perpendicular to z n and z n minus one. Z n minus one. So please check the rules are satisfied. Now, last case here, this is going to be my uh I'm going to call this as Z2. And now I have a choice. I want you to understand for the frame number 0 and frame number 1, the rules are satisfied. Z0 and Z1 are going to the joint axis. X0 is perpendicular to Z0. There is no Zn minus 1. So we don't have to worry about x0 perpendicular and intersecting with z n minus 1. And we have z, x, y. I create, I complete the triad for the first revolute joint. Look at the second revolute joint. z1 is going to the joint axis. Then if you look at x1, x1 is intersecting z1 and it is intersecting z0. And I complete the third, which is y1. See this X, Z, and Y. So I completed that trial. Now I want you to look at the joint number two. And I want to ask you this question. In which direction I should draw X2? So I have choice. I can consider first and foremost, it's a prismatic joint. So the joint and uh, the axis needs to align with Z2. So that cannot be changed. Now we have two choices. We can have, and I will say, we can have 
x2 something like this or I can have x2 something like this. Now, I want you to understand no matter what I choose x2 as, whether I choose this axis as x2 or whether I choose this axis as x2, the rules are not satisfied. No matter what I do, the rules are not satisfied. So what I'm going to do is, I want you to understand that in this particular case, we cannot satisfy all the rules. So what do we do? What I'm going to do is, I'm going to, you can choose anyone, but I will choose this as x2. x2. And since I have z2, I have x2, my y2 is going to be like this. And let me state here, this is the frame 0, this is the frame 1, this is the frame 2. Please understand, frame 2 does not satisfy rules. Now I need to add one more frame at the end and I'm going to have the same frame which is previous one over here. So I would say this is Z3, this is X3 and this is Y3. Now I would add the distances. So this distance, I'm going to call A1. I'm going to call this distance as A2. And I'm going to call this distance as D3. And some of you may ask me why D3? Because typically A's are fixed. So the lengths do not change when you have alphabet A. That is how the convention is in the textbook. If you have D, that means that value of D would change. So this angle is theta one. This angle is theta two. Once again, before I proceed any further, I want you to understand that in this problem, the rules are not satisfied. Everyone understood this? Yeah. Is this important that like we consider Z axis about the rotation axis of the model? Yes. The Z axis has to be aligned with the joint axis. So joint means it could be prismatic joint or it could be revolute joint. It should be aligned with the joint. That is absolutely required. That rule you cannot uh, negate. The other rules, and you cannot negate this rule. The problem is sometimes you will have to compromise on rule number two that I have written. Now, what I would do is, I would start the way we have setting up the problem. Remember our revolute joint, we have the rotation transformation matrix cosine theta 1 minus sine theta 1 sine theta 1 cosine theta 1 0 0 0 0 1 this is the only rotation matrix that you should remember don't forget this projection matrix and i will rewrite here you have x0 y0 z0 x1, y1, z1. Now please check x1 uh, is aligned with x0. y1 is aligned. y1 is uh, aligned with uh, z0. Are you with me? y1 is aligned with z0. This is very important. I will just write it over here. See, Y1 is going like this. 
Z0 is going in the same direction. Z1 is aligned with minus Y0. Are you with me so far? Multiply. First row, first column. First row, second column. First row, third column. First row, third column. Sign theta 1. Second row, first column. Second row, second column. Second row, third column. And once you have something like this, you don't have to complete because as you know, 0, 0, there should be 1. And if you have 1, all the rows should be 0. So third row, first column, 0. Third row, second column, 0. Third row, third row, second column, 1. Third row, third column, 0. Everyone understood this? Okay. Now, what I need to do is, I need to write 0H1, which is the most important transformation, which is the homogeneous transformation. In homogeneous transformation, this matrix, which is 0R1, needs to be copied. Cosine theta 1, 0, sine theta 1, sine theta 1, 0, minus cosine theta 1. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 1. And here, I should have x, y, and z along x0, y0, z0. So this is the distance between the zero and the first frame measured along x naught, measured along y naught, measured along z naught. So let's check this out. And this, as we discussed earlier, this relationship must be valid for all the values of theta, which means my frame number zero is over here. My frame number one is over here the length or the distance between these two frames should that relationship should be valid for all the values of theta one. Everyone understood this? Can you see that frame number zero and frame number one along x zero, frame number one and frame number zero along x zero is aligned with the distance zero. Are you with me? Yeah. So look at frame number zero. Look at frame number one. Do you see that uh, the distance between frame zero origin and frame one origin, they are aligned. Yeah. So what is the distance around X? X naught zero. About Y naught zero. The only difference is they have a Z offset. And that Z offset is positive A1. Are you with me? So theta is not playing any role in here. Now let's move forward. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 1 R2. Now in 1 R2, now we want to be a little bit careful. Because in 1 R2, uh, what's going to happen uh, is as you can see that frame number two is not satisfying uh, the rules. So what needs to happen, and I'm going to show it over here because this is very important. So this is the situation that we are dealing with. So this is the situation that we are dealing with. So we have a frame over here and I will draw this frame. 
we have y1 we have z1 we have x1 and we have this second frame which is over here which is x2 we have z2 and we have y2 <laughs> and it's extremely important to understand that v1 is the joint axis z2 is the joint axis x1 is perpendicular to z1 and is perpendicular to z0 but no matter where i choose x2 x2 will be perpendicular to z2 but x2 will never intersect z1 can you see that there is always going to be this gap this offset so what to do here in this particular case what we do is we translate this frame from this point point 2 to point 1 so what's going to happen now is i am going to translate this frame over here which means my translated frame is going to be x2 z2 and y2 so what happened translate frame 2 to 1 Now understand, as soon as I translate the frame, as soon as I translate the frame, my four rules are satisfied. Because check this out. My Z2 is going to the joint axis. My X2 is perpendicular to Z1, intersecting with Z1. X2 is perpendicular to Z2. And which means, uh, again, right hand triangle, so all four rules are satisfied as long as I'm okay with translating this frame. Everyone understood this? Why did I translate the frame? To satisfy the rules. And I have, so this will only happen uh, when the rules are not satisfied. So what, yeah. Will the end of factor frame also be? No, we are not there yet. No, wait, 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 wait. wait. So right now, I want you to translate and then I'm going to derive, I'm going to derive 0, R1 in this new configuration. I'm going to derive 0, R1 in this new configuration. And you know the matrix, this is going to be cosine theta 2 minus sine theta 2, 0, sine theta 2, cosine theta 2, 0, 0, 0, 1. And here, what I have is I have the projection matrix and I will rewrite projection matrix here because most of the times students make mistake in projection matrix. So please understand your initial frame is x1, y1, z1. Your final frame is x2, y2, z2. And now I want you to ignore this. Please ignore this. And look at this new frame. And now you see that x1, uh, x1 is aligned with z2. Sorry, x2. Let's start with uh, uh, x2. x2 is aligned with y1 y2 is aligned with z1 and z2 is aligned with x1 are you with me so please understand this is this whole thing is for translated frame shown here Yeah. The frame for two, is that part of the right hand? Because your sum of 
your middle finger to the right. Isn't your pointer finger going into the page? Uh, hold on. Um, uh, X two Z two no. Same to X two. So X Y Z. Now what I'm gonna do is X two is like this. Z two is like this. Why is coming out? Okay. So now this becomes cosine theta. This becomes minus sine theta one. This becomes zero. This becomes sine theta one. Oh, I mean, so this becomes, yeah, this becomes cosine theta one. Cosine theta two, correct. Cosine theta. Cosine theta two. And then this becomes zero. No, 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 wait a sec. Wait a sec. So first row, first column, sine theta two, first row, second column, zero, first row, third column, cosine theta two, second row, first column, cosine theta two, first row, third column, zero, and this becomes sine theta two. And then what you have is zero one zero. So this is let me see zero cosine theta two. Okay. So this is what you get. Because please understand your rotation is about Z and you get zero R one. Next thing is you need to write one H two for one H two. You're going to have minus sine theta two zero cosine theta two cosine theta two zero sine theta two zero one zero. 0, 0, 0. And now here comes the most important part. Rule is the same. This is going to be 1. This is the distance about x1, distance about y1, distance about z1. So x distance about x1, distance about y1, and distance about z1. But the most important thing here to understand that this relationship is for the translated frame. This relationship is for the translated frame. And since the translated x2, y2, z2 aligns with x1, y1, z1, I would be writing 0, 0, and 0. And why is this? Because the translated translated x2 y2 z2 align with x1 y1 z1 everyone okay with this so now i got 0 h1 i got 1 h2 now the problem is how do I solve the last frame? And let's let me see how did we draw. Okay, the last frame is something like this. And I'm gonna draw this over here. This last frame is Z3, Y3, and X3. Now, most important thing to understand here is the last frame and the, the frame number three and frame number two, there is no rotational information. So there is no rotational transformation. There is no uh, theta three involved. There is only prismatic relationship. What that means is when there is no rotational transformation, 
your rotation matrix has to be an identity matrix. But before I do that, actually, I need to explain this once again. Please understand that relationship between here to here, there is no revolute joint. which means the rotation matrix, which is, so I will write this down something like two R three is going to be identity. Two R three is going to be identity. But the trick here is even though the rotational matrix may be identity, there is no guarantee that the projection matrix is also identity. Everyone understood this. So the rotation matrix is, so I will start something like this. So I would start with two R three and this two R three is going to be an identity matrix zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. But there is no guarantee that the next projection matrix will also be an identity matrix. So to be on the safer side, I will write X2, I will write Y2, Z2, X3, Y3, Z3. And now I would check. And please understand, we are not capturing the translation between the frames. This transformation, uh, which is 2R3, is only for rotation. So please try to understand X3 is aligned with X2. Can you see that X3 is aligned with X2? X3 is aligned with X2. The, uh, Y3 is aligned with Y2. And Z3 is aligned with Z2. So in this particular case, the projection matrix is identity. That's great, but it doesn't have to be. So finally, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. The story doesn't end here because we want the homogeneous transformation, which is 2H3. And in 2H3, I would copy this matrix one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 one now here i want you to understand something the here there are three fill in the blanks at first location which is first row fourth column that is the distance between frame two, say frame three and frame two along X2. Frame three and frame two along Y2. Frame three and frame two along Z2. However, please understand that we have translated our frame. Do you agree with me? That we have translated our frame. So the total distance between these two is nothing but this distance A2 so the total distance is going to be D, uh, A, A2 plus D3. So that is the distance between these two. Now let's identify and this is, I will explain this once again. Now in this problem, the rules were not satisfied. So we translated the frame. After translating the frame, we found out the rotation matrix between frame number two and frame number three. Since the only relationship was because of the prismatic joint, we got an identity rotation matrix. And in this case, 
fortunately we got an identity projection matrix so we finally got identity now we need to populate 2 h3 when we are going to populate 2 h3 i want to capture the translation between frame 2 and frame 3 about x2 in the direction of y2 in the direction of z2 and that has to be from the translated frame so now for for all practical purposes what you should do is you should ignore this frame so for calculation ignore this frame the old frame that you had you should ignore because we translated the frame and then as you can see uh, the distance along x2 let me see where it is distance along x2 can you see that this distance is zero are you with me distance along y2 this distance is zero and distance along z2 is a2 plus d3 Are you with me? And your final forward kinematics is going to be 0 H3 is equal to 0 H1, 1 H2, and 2 H3. And that would give you a very complicated expression. But please understand. Uh, we don't do this by hand. What you should do is uh, we should use MATLAB to solve this problem. Everyone comfortable in programming this in MATLAB, symbolic variable? Yeah. I have a question. Uh, sir, like uh, here we just have three joints, so that's why we are doing matrix calculations for uh, you know, three uh, matrix But what if we have, you know, 20 degrees of freedom robot, something like that? MATLAB. Or, you know, uh, this type is fine. But, but uh, we won't calculate 50 in MATLAB also. So is there any one single, you know, uh, something like a single formula for number of uh, joint? Yes. So basically, you don't do this calculation when you have 20 degree of freedom robot. What you do is you basically model that inside a modeling language, like a robotica or inside the MATLAB primitives, and then you use MATLAB or gazebo or uh, uh, I mean uh, there are so okay but you know behind the mathematical formula that only I'm concerned about okay I want to tell you something and this is very very important like you must have heard about all these robotic programming languages right but if you really want to get jobs as a robotic modeling engineer then the new language that is going to dominate this entire robotics industry is NVIDIA Isaac Sim. So probably I can tell you uh, next year people are not going to use gazebo. They are so I have been through the, so there is gazebo. <laughs> then there is VREP. Therein there is robotica. At one time, uh, there was Microsoft robotics toolbox. So that was again the, the language. But right now, if you are looking for large simulations that can go on massive parallel processing, which is NVIDIA CUDA platform. Then NVIDIA Isaac Sim is something that you will need. So if you learn NVIDIA Isaac Sim, I can promise you that uh, your resume will get noticed uh, by recruiters very quickly. This is where the jobs are gonna be. Yeah. I mean, Gazebo is good, VREP is good, Robotica is good, MATLAB Simulink is good, but Unfortunately, NVIDIA Isaac Sim uh, is used for massive uh, robot simulation. When I say massive robot simulation, what I mean by that is imagine you have an entire robotic factory. You cannot model that inside Gazebo. 
you cannot model that inside matlab you model you can model that inside nvidia isaacson because this this is basically built up on parallel structure architecture and you can use power of gpu to perform those simulations anyway so to check check this out right now nvidia isaacson is free to download and learn if you can learn this is the best software for the future anyway so uh this manual thing you really don't do when you have to model the robots which are super complicated uh, this is simple for a rotation prismatic joint and understand the underlying theory and many a times there is numerical kinematics i did not talk about the numerical kinematics but what you do is you basically use uh, you form these equations using uh, matrix algebra and numerical math that's that's a whole different uh, thing altogether but before i proceed to next problem i want you to understand that there could be problem wherein the rules may not match so at that time you will have to translate the frame uh, so, yeah. so basically the second frame is just needed yeah second frame is needed to start the problem but for the analysis purposes we need to translate the frame and i tell you what is the reason for translation uh understand and and this is more like an intuitive analysis than anything else understand theta 2 once you rotate theta 2 the overall extension is going to be the extension of the the prismatic joint and the fixed offset so what it means is when this joint is rotated when this joint is rotated this whole thing will get rotated which means not only the the a2 will get rotated but if you have some non zero d3 the d3 will also get rotated and in order to take that into account you will have to add uh, this term to this identity matrix which is so what this means is there is no theta 3 there is only d3 there is no theta there is only d that's why you get an identity matrix uh, yeah how is the prismatic process not a cylinder it's just a cylinder going back and forth uh so it could be a, a lead screw i don't know if you have seen the lead screw basically you have a motor and this lead screw goes think about it something like a a, a jack screw jack yeah. so that it or it could be a hydraulic joint or pneumatic joint where it can go forward and backward there is no rotation there is pure translation yes so trans if you so but understand whenever we are solving the robotics problem and i want to take the next problem just like that when we are trying solving the robotics problem we will always separate the joint in terms of prismatic and rigid joint a classic example and let me answer your question imagine the shoulder shoulder is nothing but a spherical joint so we don't analyze spherical joint as a spherical joint we consider spherical joint as three revolute joints which are perpendicular to each other everyone understood this for example 3d printer 3d printer is nothing but if you want to think about that as a robot you have three prismatic joint one in x direction other prismatic joint in y direction and the third prismatic joint in z direction so no matter how complicated the motion is at the end of the day you have to divide that into combination or you need to come up with some combination of revolute and prismatic joint that will achieve the final motion what does that mean if you if you are watching the the youtube videos or spherical joints 
people have come up with the spherical joints wherein you have two or three motors and you have the actual spherical joint so the actual sphere rotates that could be very good mechanically that could be the mechanical way to represent the joint but if you want to solve for kinematics then you have to represent that as prismatic and rotating so that is the beginning and once we once we look at the Cotonians and all, there are some shortcuts you can take. But first, let's master these concepts. Everyone understood this? Okay. Now, next problem which I want to talk about is something called as the spherical joint. So now, spherical joint. It's something like the shoulder. So you have roll, pitch, and yaw. You can have orientations in three directions. So, and there is a concept which is called as the gimbal lock. So let me explain uh, what a spherical joint is. So in spherical joint, you have the first revolute joint, which is perpendicular to second revolute joint, which is perpendicular to third revolute joint. So it is R perpendicular to R perpendicular to R. Now I'm going to show you a configuration. So this is the first revolute joint. The first revolute joint is attached to the second revolute joint. And the second revolute joint is attached to the third revolute joint. Now, again, I want you to visualize the first revolute joint perpendicular to second revolute joint perpendicular to third revolute joint. Now, let me take this moment to talk to you about something called as gimbal lock. And if you take robotics too, we'll talk about spherical joint again and again and again and again and again and again. Because we are going to talk about UAV dynamics, whether that UAV is fixed wing, whether that UAV is rotary wing, spherical joint is the basis for that UAV. So we will use uh, spherical joint analogy when we decide the frames for UAV. Now, I want you to understand one thing. Uh, let's, let's first identify the axis. So this is going to be my Z naught, X naught, Y naught. Everyone okay with this? This is going to be my Z1. This is going to be my Y1. And this is going to be my X1. Yeah. Why not can be in the opposite direction? Yeah. Not why, yeah. Why not can be in opposite direction? That's totally fine. But I just drew it like this. But you can you can do it. If you draw why not in opposite direction, only thing is your projection matrix will be different. Other than that, it should be fine. Next thing is I will draw one more joint here. The coordinate frame. And I'm going to say this is going to be Z2. This is going to be X2. And this is going to be Y2. And let's see if my all four rules are satisfied. V1 is going to the joint axis. X1 is perpendicular to Z1, perpendicular to Z0, and Y1, X, Z, Y. Let's look at Z2. Z2 is uh, Z2 is going to the joint. X2 is perpendicular to Z2, intersecting with Z2. And X2, unfortunately, in this case, has this offset between these two. Are you with me? So same story that uh, we the the rules are not satisfied 
but we will proceed and then there is one more frame which is x3 v3 and y3 and i want you to understand that frame 2 does not satisfy rules and i would specify the distances this i'm going to call as a1 and i'm going to call this as a2 and i'm call this as a3 actually this is a very important problem and i will i will do the matlab simulation on this problem now hopefully i will have time i want you to understand one thing imagine if joint number 2 Right now, everything is zero. First, theta one is zero. Theta two is zero. Theta three is also zero. Now, what happens when theta two, what happens when theta two becomes positive 90 degrees? Collision. Collision. So what's going to happen is, in this frame, in this revolute joint, and this revolute joint will represent only one rotation. I want you to think about it. And it may be difficult, but once we do the MATLAB simulation, it will be absolutely clear. So what I want you to understand is everything is fine as long as this second revolute joint is not 90 degrees. This is theta 2, this is theta 1, and this is theta 3. If theta 2 is 90 degrees, then what will happen is basically and then I will have something like this. What that means, and I want you to think about it, this theta 1 and this theta 3, you cannot distinguish whether you rotate theta 1 or whether you rotate theta 3. At the end of the day, final result is going to be the same. And I want you to understand the physical interpretation of this. In this particular, ideally, my joint 1, joint 2, and joint 3, these three joints are perpendicular to each other. What that means is rotation theta 1 has no effect whatsoever on rotation theta 3. However, as soon as my rotation theta 2 becomes 90 degrees, theta 1 and theta 3, they become 1. It means out of 3 rotations, 3 perpendicular rotations, 2 rotations represent only one thing, which means you have lost 1 degree of freedom. And this is precisely called as the gimbal lock. Why does this gimbal lock happen? This gimbal lock happens because the system becomes degenerate. It means there are supposed to be three revolute joints perpendicular to each other. But in this particular configuration, out of these three revolute joints, two revolute joints became one. It means you lost one revolution. And this must be awarded in aircraft. So that will lead to singularity. Some of you may ask me, is that, is this the real thing? Now please try to understand. 
This gimbal lock occurs because of Euler angles, because our angles, these theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3 are the angles which are perpendicular to each other. These are Euler angles. That's why this happens. But as soon as you go on to a different formulation, like quaternions, this gimbal lock does not happen. So by default, all the robotic simulation softwares, they use quaternions. Nobody uses Euler angles. And for quaternion, if you really want to learn what quaternions are, and we will talk about it uh, maybe a little bit next class, but after that, we will talk about it. Uh, I would encourage you to watch the video by three, uh, three blue, one brown on quaternions. So you should watch that video. And I would actually add that as a homework assignment that you should watch that video before you come on the lecture on quaternions. But please understand this configuration is all good. But this configuration or this formulation fails when theta 2 is 0. And this is called as the gimbal lock. What? What? Yeah, theta 2 would be 90. So this theta 2 would be 90. Okay. Now what I will do is I will quickly rewrite uh, 0 R1 that by now you should know cosine theta 1 minus sine theta 1 0 sine theta 1 cosine theta 1 0 0 0 1 now here x0 y0 G0, X1, Y1, Z1. Look at X1. X1 is aligned with X0. Y1 is aligned with Z0. And Z1 is aligned with minus Y0. Everyone okay? So after multiplying, I get cosine theta 1, I get 0, sine theta 1, I get sine theta 1, I get 0, I get minus cosine theta 1, then I get 0, 1, 0. Are you with me so far? Now I would write 0, H1. Copy this cosine theta 1, 0, sine theta 1, sine theta 1, 0, minus cosine theta 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1. And here, just check this out. Uh, the distance between the frame 0 and frame 1 around x0 is 0, around y0 is 0, around z0 is a1. Everyone good with this? Now, frame number 2 has a problem. So, what are we going to do? Translate. So, I'm going to translate. I mean, just for this problem, I will just draw a separate figure. So this is like C1, X1, Y1. And I would just draw this for reference. X2, Z2, Y2. 
and I'm going to translate this x2 c2 y2 this angle is theta 2 so i will write 1 r2 cosine theta 2 minus sine theta 2 sine theta 2 cosine theta 2 0 0 0 0 1 and remember we cannot eliminate the projection matrix that has to be there x1 y1 z1 so please understand this is the old frame x2 y2 z2 this is a new frame now x2 uh, where is x2? x2 is aligned with y1. y2 is aligned with z1. And z2 is aligned with x1. So what you can do? 1, r2. First row, first column. Sin theta 2. First row, second column. First row, third column. Uh, second row, first column. Second row, second column. Zero, one, zero. And now understand we have translated the frame. So zero, sorry, one H. 1 h2 is going to become minus sin theta 2 0 cosine theta 2 cosine theta 2 0 sin theta 2 0 1 0 0 0 0 and please understand now both these frames coincide so there is no translation are you with me so far? 0, 0, 0, 1. And why is it? Because please understand frame 2 and frame 1 coincide. Uh, let's move on to the last one. 2, R, 3. And here, the last joint is a revolute joint. Unlike the previous problem, where the previous problem, have we had a prismatic joint. Here, we have a revolute joint. What that means is we have to take into account the rotations. So this is going to be cosine theta 3 minus sine theta 3, sine theta 3, cosine theta 3, 0, 0, 0, 0. One. But let's not forget the projection matrix. Now the question that comes in the mind is which frame should I consider? But no matter what happens, you are going to relate projection of new frame onto the old frame. So please understand this is going to be x3 y3 z3 x2 y2 z2 now the question is should i consider this frame or should i consider this frame doesn't matter because at the end of the day the projection matrix is not talking about the translations the projection matrix is just talking about the relationship between these two so uh, let me, I forgot to draw the last frame. So this is X3. This is V3. And this is Y3. So it doesn't matter which frame you choose as your frame X2. X3 is aligned with X2. Y3 is aligned with Y2. 
and Z3 is aligned with Z2. So luckily in this problem, everything became identity. And now I have the same matrix cosine theta 3 minus sine theta 3 sine theta 3 cosine theta 3 0 0 0 0 1. Last part is I want to add the homogeneous transformation to H3. For 2H3, I would say cosine theta 3 minus sine theta 3 0 sine theta 3 cosine theta 3 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 however here please understand i need to find out the distance between the translated frame and the final frame so which means my distances are going to be something like a2 a2 and a3 i'm going to have the distances a2 and a3 now one thing that i want all of you to remember is here is where the question and I, I let me let me give you the where the confusion arises. Now my question to you is this: total distance is a two plus a three. So my question to you is: should I say a two plus a three cosine theta three, a two plus a three sine theta three, and zero? Or should I say 0, 0, A2 plus A3? Now, this is something that you should, and, and probably I want you to think about it. Right now, what we have is we have translated frame number 2 all the way to frame number 1. Okay, so now what we have is we have a revolute joint that we transfer, but at the end of the day, we need to relate the translations between these frames. So the translation between frame two and frame three is nothing but a two plus a three, and these translations should be valid for all the values of theta. And what theta are we looking at? Theta 3. So please understand what I'm saying is here, I have two options. And one of one option is right and one option is wrong. Should I say A2 plus A3 uh, maybe if you look at this distance is uh, sine theta 3, A2 plus A3, cosine theta 3, something like that. Or should I say just here? Should I say 0? 0, A2 plus A3. So far, we have solved so many of these problems. In almost all the problems, what happened is when we had a revolute joint, we took into account the component of the projection. So we actually took the, the distance and we took the projection. Now in this problem, what has happened is rotation is already captured in this rotation matrix. The rotation is already captured in this rotation matrix. So what I want you to understand here is the distance between the frame three and frame two 
around x2 is 0. Distance between frame 3 and frame 2 around y2 is 0. But distance between frame 2 and frame 3 around z2 is a2 plus a3. Are you with me so far? I will try to explain this once again. So, what has happened is we have translated the frame. And since we have translated the frame, that whole joint has gone to the joint what we have at joint uh, one. So right now my joint two and my joint one, they are one and the same. And I want to find out the distance of frame three from the translated joint, uh, translated frame two. And please understand the X distance between frame three and frame two is zero. The Y distance between frame three and frame two is zero. And only there is Z distance, which is nothing but A2 plus A3. Everyone understood this? So this is going to be your homogeneous transformation. And at the end, you would have 0 H3 is equal to 0 H1. 1 H2 and 2 H3. Once you do this, you will get the homogeneous transformation from the zeroth frame all the way to the third frame. Uh, ideally, I should, let me see, I have the solution but I would like to solve this with MATLAB. Uh, so let me open MATLAB. Yeah. Yeah. So just to answer this question, when we are looking at the spherical joint, you would just say A1 is equal to zero a2 is equal to 0. Yeah, and a3 is equal to 0. Yeah. So you would say a1 is equal to 0, a2 is equal to 0, and a3 is equal to 0. And now it becomes the spherical joint, which means the frame 3 is on frame 2, and frame 3 and 2 are on top of frame 1. So that becomes the spherical joint. Okay. Yeah. Would translating the frame be redundant then? Translation of no no. The distance to the third. Right. No, no, no. So uh, what I did actually I wanted to solve one more problem wherein the exceptions to the frame occurs. That's why I deliberately added the distances to make sure that the violation of rule happens and we take that into account into translation. But strictly, if it's a spherical joint, then the translational distances between each frame is zero. So I don't think I have time, but what we should do is, and actually there is a, a script online. So you can run this and at the end, substitute A1 is equal to zero, A2 is equal to zero, A3 is equal to zero. And that will give you a, a very beautiful result. And that is called as, uh, the DCM that is called as direction cosine matrix. And this direction cosine matrix is the fundamental matrix that is used for aircraft navigation. So if you come to robotics two, I will derive this again and I will spend some time talking about DCM. But let me see. You can correct me if I'm, uh, so SYMS, A1, A2, A3, uh, H01 is equal to cosine, yeah, I actually I need, need to add TH1, TH2, TH3, 
pH one, pH pH two, and and this believe it or not, I spent uh, when I was working in industry when I actually developed the flight control system for Bell six hundred nine. This is all we played with direction cosine matrices because direction cosine matrices gives you the aircraft roll, pitch, and yaw. So there is an inertial measurement unit, which is three axis accelerometer, three axis gyroscope. You measure the acceleration data, you measure the gyro data, and find out the orientation of the aircraft. So cosine theta one, zero, sine theta, theta one, uh, zero, and so on. Then you have Sine theta one, sine theta one, zero minus cosine theta one, zero, and so on. Zero, one, zero, a one, and so on. Zero, 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 one. Now I'm going to copy this. Copy. Paste one H two is going to become minus sine theta two zero cosine theta two cosine theta two. Zero sine theta two this will become zero theta two and the last but not least okay which one two and H two three. We have cosine theta three minus sine theta three. Zero. Because this is going to be a very important result even in robotics or in aircraft navigation control uh, this is this will give you a direction cosine matrix theta 3 0 and then finally you are going to have 0 going to have 1 and then you can say H03 is equal to H01, H12 multiplied by H23. Oh, did I? Oh, yeah, that, I, yeah, that MATLAB tried to be over smart. For capital D, yeah. Where it was okay to plus it, yeah. It plus it. Yeah, I'm already two minutes past the class time. Okay. And say if this will run.
and then if you go to command window that will give you the only thing that you need to do is substitute the values of a2 and a3 a1 a2 a3 is equal to 0 and you are going to get a very nice long expression that will be your direction cosine matrix and uh, we will stop here